from Crawford's Auto in Mesa, Arizona. Welcome to our free classes on general automotive maintenance and repair. This lesson is going to be on the braking system. The braking system on a car is a, it simply converts the kinetic energy in your vehicle, basically the, the energy of your vehicle being in motion down the road, is going to convert that energy into heat energy through the use of a friction material. There are two basic types of brake pads, we'll start, or braking systems. We'll start with this one. This is going to be a drum brake system. These are brake shoes. These are forced into the drum of the vehicle and apply in a great force to produce heat through the friction material lining the, the here's the steel, here's the friction material. The other type of brake would be a disc brake. We're going to demonstrate these on a vehicle as well. Here we have a brake caliper, brake rotor. These would be the brake pads, which have the friction material with the steel backing on them. Now we're going to walk over to a 2006 Scion XB, and we'll start with the hydraulics of the braking system, which is how we create the great force necessary to generate the heat. It starts out with the master cylinder. They call it the master cylinder because it's the cylinder that has control. When you press your brake pedal, you're applying mechanical pressure to a hydraulic piston inside the master cylinder. This is the master cylinder that, uh, that gen it generates the force through hydraulic fluid through lines down to the calipers and in this case to the rear wheel cylinders and drums. Now we'll raise the vehicle up and I'll show you the brakes. Okay, this is a 2006 Scion XB. It was loaned to us by Myrex Marketing for purposes of making this video. This is going to demonstrate a front disc braking system on the vehicle. This is the rotor. This part turns with the, with the car. I'll, I'll rotate it so you can see. As it's rolling down the road, this part here turns. This is going to be the caliper. The caliper would be called a slave cylinder in this case because it's being told what to do by the master cylinder. Again, the master cylinder exerts hydraulic pressure through a brake hose and line that, that applies pressure to the piston on this side of the caliper. That piston forces outwards it, as well as it, it presses on both brake pads at once. When you apply the, the uh, brake pedal, hydraulic pressure squeezes the brake pads generating a great deal of heat through the rotor. Now this rotor is a vented rotor so it has grooves all through the rotor all the way around. This works like a centrifugal fan forcing air to come in here and out through the outside as the wheel spinning down the road. This helps to dissipate the heat from the rotor that's generated during stopping. Again, when you're stopping, it, it creates a lot of heat. You'd never want to touch one of these after you've been driving the vehicle. Now we're going to go to the back of the vehicle, and I'm going to show you how a drum brake works and a, a visual of the drum brakes. This is a brake drum. It goes on the vehicle like this. Again, it's turning. As the vehicle rolls down the road, this would be turning. I'm going to remove the drum. You can see why they call it a drum. It's the shape of a drum. Uh, the friction material on the brake shoe is going to be forced out onto the drum of the brake and that produces the heat to slow the vehicle down, or the friction. Again, this is a brake shoe as I showed you earlier. This is the friction material. Notice the friction material on this is pretty thin, but in this application this would be about 90% of the brake material left. These uh, rear brakes only do 20% of the stopping, the fronts do 80%, so you don't need near as much friction material on the rear. This is going to be the, uh, the slave cylinder, or it's called a wheel cylinder in this case. It's still a hydraulic slave cylinder. The master cylinder is going to produce hydraulic pressure through this line and this hose. It's connected to the master cylinder into the back of the wheel cylinder or slave cylinder. Then the brake shoes, simultaneously there are two pistons. Each one is going to force the shoe out like this to apply pressure. The shoes expand, applies pressure, the friction material generates the heat. Now if you look at the, the drum brake on this vehicle, there are no cooling fins. So 
Drum brakes are more prone to building up heat. Excessive heat in your braking system can cause brake fade. For that reason, typically most modern vehicles are going to use uh, disc brakes all the way around. This vehicle has drums in the rear, discs in the front. That's the standard conventional brakes on a lot of cars today. Now we're going to walk over to a 1997 Ford Mustang. This vehicle actually has disc brakes all the way around. I don't need to go back through the specifics. But as you can see, we have brake pads, calipers, and rotors. Again, the rotors turn. Now these rotors are also vented. Or So here we have slots all through the rotor. Those go all the way through to the center. It works like a centrifugal fan. It's gonna, the air is going to draw in through the middle, go out to the outside to help dissipate the heat. Now we'll go to the rear. You're going to notice that the rear brakes Again, considerably smaller brake pads, at least half the size. The rotor's also not as thick. There are no vents in this rotor. It's a solid rotor. That's because the backs are only doing 20% of the stopping. They don't generate as much heat, um, and they don't have to dissipate it as fast. That's it for this lesson on brakes. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. That concludes this lesson on disc brakes. Thank you for watching. All right, so that's it for this lesson on brakes. Okay. That's it for this lesson on brakes. Thank you for watching.